Logan in World War II again, and this time he's in the Pacific Theater just before the atomic bomb is dropped. One question, can these filmmakers make up their mind where Logan was and what he did so that we can have something resembling a cannon? This guy is awful at shooting a mass of purposely freed prisoners. No prison can hold Wolverine, except one made of stone and metal, apparently. Either this isn't a nuclear blast, as I was led to believe, or else this is a sin, because this is a small bay with a detonation on the other side. It would be like half a second before the nuclear blast would incinerate this asshole and everything on this side of the bay. The writer saw Indiana Jones nuke the fridge and said, I can top that shit. Who needs adamantium when you can survive atom bomb heat? What about fall? out. Radiation? Is the Japanese guy completely safe because of a piece of steel or iron that doesn't even cover him with an airtight seal? Not that this is a terrible way to wake up, but flashback within a flashback cliche. Also, does every movie about Wolverine have to start with flashbacks? Also, I know this is a dream, again, but did they ever even f for this to be a realistic scenario in his mind? I mean, we saw them flirt and sh but she was Scott's girlfriend until she died. Then she tried to hump him in the third movie, but he rebuffed her because she was that phoenix psycho. Then she died again, so why are we being shown a realistic dream where they were a couple in bed together? This is canned hot. No, she, no! Wolverineception. You're not a hunter, are you? Not anymore. Man, this thing writes itself. Angsty hero tries to live a private life of solitude, but keeps bumping into people who need saving cliche. Also, don't go to all the trouble to show him living in a crevice in a f***ing mountain near a remote Yukon town if you're just gonna wipe all that away by putting your plot-propelling victim scream with an earshot of said crevice. So he's trying hard to be left alone and go unnoticed, but the death of a f***ing bear sends him over the edge and he just has to have revenge? Is this Wolverine or Brave 2? Or do you have evidence that the guy he's looking for is in this bar? You can hear the music thumping outside the bar, but when Wolverine walks in, it's quiet enough that people can have a quiet conversation inside the bar. Also, the girl who's been spying on Wolverine knew that he would emerge from the woods tonight and go to this drinking establishment to avenge his bear friend's death. Which last I heard was illegal. Arrow Sheriff. Logan turns over a shot glass with a tiny amount of liquor in it, but then the next cut shows a lot more booze flowing over the wound. This sword is hundreds of years old. It was named Danza by the first samurai who used it. Movie thinks if the sword is given some sort of backstory, it will have Tarantino-esque credibility. Like so, unpacked him back. And naturally, Logan being the sort of person to let complete strangers tell him what to do, goes with her. Getting a tab. I actually don't see how a knife pretends to threaten the indestructible Wolverine, but maybe he was just tired of arguing. Listen, Wolverine is a funny character, okay? You don't have to contrive bullshit scenes like this that the real Wolverine would never ever let happen just to get a few laughs, okay? You look nice. I feel violated. In no way can this bed be comfortable. I can end the your eternity. Make you mortal. Dying old man makes assumption that a mortal dude wants to die. Hey, you saved my life. I want to repay you by killing you. You're welcome. We have a reason to believe that your ability to heal can be passed. Passed? From you to another. Well, I hope the writers also remembered to include a convenient reason why this technology can never be used again. Also, superpowers are now gallstones. Or herpes. That way to kill her. Yoshida plays the pronoun game so that Logan has to ask who the hell he's talking about. <laughs> Human drama plays out exactly as Logan is leaving so that he has to get involved. Movie mistakenly thinks Famke Jensen flashbacks will somehow help. This character has way too much importance to the story to actually be dead, so we're sure to see him later when the movie needs a surprise. I realize it may have been raining recently, but it is pretty f***ing far from raining right now. So why do all these members of the crowd still have their umbrellas up? Why are you still here? You don't care about this dead asshole, remember? Does he think nobody can see him? Wait, does the movie think nobody can see him? Who's that? It's Mariko. Nothing about this guy stands out as anyone special, but Logan asks who he is so that we can get some exposition on a character who will be important later. And he was always fascinated with your kind. That's racist. Definite possible future love interest is definite. Jesus, this ninja protector weirdo dude doesn't even have his primary weapon ready. Legolas and Hawkeye would both already have fired 35 arrows by now. Movie rips off the trained assassin follows crucial kidnapping by rooftop in order to help save the day thing from the Bourne ultimatum. Stalking. At some point, Logan stopped and bought a ticket for this train, which is unlikely, or he just showed his metal claws to the people in charge and they gave him a seat. If so, what a hobo Wolverine has become. So where are we headed, Mariko? Because I sure as hell didn't buy a ticket to this shit. Logan just assumes the role of this chick's protector after the chase because reasons. You can't pretend shit isn't happening when it is, princess. Unless you want to die. Okay, so maybe everyone speaks only Japanese on this train, but what a horrible discussion this is to have across the aisle for anyone to hear. Oh, what the hell? What the hell indeed? If Wolverine has been given some sort of drug that makes him mortal again, wouldn't the bullets kill him instead of just wounding him? I sure hope this isn't going to be one of those we were only able to do half the procedure type deals that are ultra convenient. Yakuza guys managed to find a way to the exact train Wolverine and Mariko hopped on, even though they were way behind earlier. 
Also, these guys brought guns to a claw fight. Hero fighting on a train looks up just in time to see something that will decapitate him, cliche. Hero fighting on a train looks up just in time to see something that will decapitate him, cliche, again. Video game action sequence. What are you still doing here? I thought you were done being the hero. Jean Grey is the hottest annoying ghost in film history. Come to me. Jean Grey gets the preposition wrong. He's just a man now. His flesh is weak now. Yeah, now when Logan gets multiple gunshot wounds, he can only stand up for 12 hours before someone finally needs to take him to the hospital. What a pussy. I don't expect you to understand. You're not Japanese. That's racist. I see Mirigo took hiding out lessons from Sarah Connor and makes a phone call that endangers both Logan and her. We now take you to the lumberjacking portion of this movie. Please. Take it. Can you offer the gift after you get out of the well? This movie feels like we're in the ninth season of a TV show called Wolverine and they've run out of ideas, so they make him go to a faraway country and he learns existentialism. One way to get Jean Grey out of your dreams is to start kissing Asian girls you hardly know. Or not. The bad guys were able to kidnap Mariko without alerting Logan. What, are the Yakuza guys ninjas now? I need to tell you something. Do it. No. So she just drives all this way without going ahead and telling him the something? Logan. Well, I'll be damned. She did drive that whole way in silence before telling him the something. I saw you die. Prediction of the future that the main character is going to die is totally useless. You're holding your own heart in your hand. It's not beating. Well, I would hope his heart isn't beating if he's holding it in his hand. That would be super wrong. Wolverine can just walk into the important and mob-connected Naburo's pet house while he's sexing hookers. Get out. Record scratch noise and the music goes off when the main character interrupts a party cliché. English. That's racist. Wolverine straight up tries to murder a dude. I need to tell you all this because it's important to know why you're going to get slapped. We interrupt this Wolverine movie to bring you The Last Samurai. Ninjas who silently and stealthily kill all the other people in the compound without raising any suspicion swarm in an obvious visible pack prior to capturing the one guy they actually came here for. The Viper. Discount Poison Ivy. These assholes walk right past a dead f***ing body, but the slightly ajar door is reason to pause with concern. <laughs> was smashing through the glass necessary? I don't know what that green spit she put on the pen was, but the pen stab to the neck alone didn't kill this guy? Yes, let's waste time in a Wolverine movie trying to make the audience think the main character's gonna die. Again. Ridiculous samurai sword fight in a home medical facility somehow doesn't damage any of the crucial medical equipment. Live with that. Movie makes sure the bad guy attacks the good guy one last time so the good guy's morally justified in killing him. Two shots of Logan stopping his motorcycle in the snow to look at his destination within a minute and a half of each other. Check back in 45 seconds when we do it again. I don't know what's less believable, that she can see this shit going on from way up here, or that she even heard it in the first place to come running to the f***ing window. Is there any reason why he can't just cut a bunch of these off? We need to fill five minutes with something to give this movie a little more runtime. Oh, I know, just have him shoot arrows at him the whole time. See, when you commit all your ninjas to the Wolverine capture, you have no one left to even spot this chick walking right up to the gate. Wait, on second thought, Logan is already inside, awake from his coma, so that was like an hour or more ago. So there should definitely be ninjas out here patrolling and seeing pink-haired motorcycle chicks approaching the compound. I don't know much about the Silver Samurai from the comics, but I know everyone that I know who loves the Silver Samurai hates this movie for what it did to Silver Samurai. Nice of the Silver Samurai to wait patiently for these three to exchange looks over a dead poison chick before continuing his pursuit. Because when a reptile sheds its skin, it can somehow survive an arrow to the chest. Alright, this chick finally got interesting. Oh. Never mind. Why is the Silver Samurai calmly stalking his prey instead of just f***ing killing him? Yes, let's leave the guy you're fighting to go after the guy shooting harmless arrows at you. Makes perfect sense. Also, how the f*** long is this movie gonna wait before showing us the old man inside the Silver Samurai suit? Hey! Bob. Logan believes it's best to announce your presence when you have the upper hand in a fight. Also, look, Harada shot this guy in the eye with an arrow, and there was clearly blood coming from the opening. Then Wolverine chopped dude's head off, but now it looks like this is exactly where his head was supposed to be the whole time, as if the helmet was just there for show. Don't look so shocked. I am not shocked. And transfer your unwanted healing to my body. Drilling into Logan's claws transfers his superpowers because genetics. Let's talk about Yoshida's plan. Plan A was to ask Wolverine if he wanted to transfer his healing properties and live a mortal life. Wolverine turned that down. Plan B, fake your own fucking death for no reason. Look, they had Wolverine right where they needed him. This green stuff made him sleepy, then Viper kissed heart-weakening parasites into his body. He was basically mortal. All they had to do was strap the guy down, go to a lab, and steal his powers. Job done. Instead, the movie wants to have this big, not a surprise, with Yoshida faking his death, which opened up a billion unneeded complications. You know I'm giving you the very death you longed for. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. I buried my grandfather. 
Even though Yoshida sucked out pretty much all of Wolverine's immortality, a couple of stab wounds are gonna still kill him. You asked me to come say goodbye. Sayonara. That's racist. Goddamn Jean Grey has to steal another scene because star power. You are hurting people, Jean. I had to. Main character forgives himself and the ghost goes away cliche. So, where do you wanna go? We'll see. Interesting. Not really, but... It's upsetting that something interesting might happen in this movie off-screen. Why would a military contractor like Trask Industries advertise on the televisions that hang in the security area of airports? I mean, the only reason I can think of is we're trying to be cutesy and shoehorn in a little tease of things to come, and that's just not good enough. Magneto gives away his presence with magnetic weird that everyone can see instead of just tapping Logan on the shoulder. Also, other than looking cool, is there any reason this conversation needed to take place at the security checkpoint? Or even in an airport, for that matter? Why not outside in the cab Logan took to get here? or in the diner where he ate his breakfast this morning. There are dark forces, Wolverine. This is where Gandalf and Magneto officially became the same character. How is this possible? I know, amazing, right? Professor X was dead at the end of X-Men The Last Stand, but the end credit scene showed he would live again. One question, though. How can you come back from the dead but still need a wheelchair? Getting a top. You sure found a way to make the time pass up there. Tommy! How's the peeping? Tommy? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? As I told Lady Freeze when I pulled her plug, this is a one-woman show. You want answers? I want the truth!